mistake. That's Rodenheiser. Rebennikov, Sitsinov, and Butchkov is the line for the Soviet Union. Puck out of play once again over the board. Paul Johnson in the faceoff against Trevenikov. Mayasich playing the fence with Captain Karain. Here's Mayasich. Pass to Rodenheiser. Sologubov rides him off. Rodenheiser has it. The center slapped aside. And a lot of folks think that it's a goal, but it is not. It's on the side of the cage. Face off in Russian territory. It's Sologubov against number 16, Weldon Olsen. Trying to get a shot away was Rodenheiser with a bouncing puck. Picked up. That's Yakushev. Rebenyakov, the center. Backhand shot, blocked. Mayosic straps for it. Knocked down by Sologobov. He comes in. Right out in front, a shot then by Sitsinov. It's blocked. Another shot by Sologobov, and it's cleared by Mayosic. Puck is still free. Picked up by Butchkov. Sitsinov has it, centers it. Flat the side by McCartan. Rebenyakov into the corner to Butchkov again. Butchkov has it to Bolin. Bolin tries to pass through off the pads of Olsen. On the far side, Rodenheiser picks it up. With a minute and 20 seconds remaining now in the first period. Russia leading 2-1. Rodenheiser broke his stick. Bolin has it, number four. Johnson comes in on him, steals it away. The shot blocked in front by Sologubov. And it goes to Bolin once more. To Grabenyakov, number 11. Has Alexandrov on the wing. One minute to go in the first period. Lokchev, number seven. Lokchev again. Ridden off. He still has it. Still Lokchev to Alexandrov in front. He shoots. Clear behind the net. No goal. Roger Christian stopped by Lokchev again. Lokchev shoots. Blocked in front. Lokchev has it. Across to Almatov. He couldn't get the shot off. They scrap for it in the corner. Almatov, along with Karain for the United States. Finally goes up to Roger Christian, trying to get by Kuchewski. Poked at by Sidorenkov, number five. They pin him into the corner. 15 seconds remaining now in the first period. Kept in by Johnson. Sidorenkov, number five. And neutral ice. And there's the buzzer. And that's the end of the first period. The score is USSR 2, USA 1. Back here at Blythe Arena, the score is Russia 2, the United States 1. As for saves, McCartan made 14 as compared to 9 for Puchkov. Still two more big periods to come. Thank you. Here's the way the scoring went in the first period. The United States scored first, Bill Cleary, assisted by Bob Cleary at 4.04. Then Nick Alexandrov, assisted by Sologubov, scored at 5.03. Then Mike Butchkov, assisted by Sitsinov, scored at 9.37 of the first period. So USSR leads 2-1. One. one penalty in the first period to Sidorenkov for tripping. We're in between periods here, between the first and second. Not much going on, but there is with Chris Schenkel. This is the 80-meter jumping hill at Squaw Valley, California. This is where 46 of the world's best shoot the works tomorrow. And here's Ralph Batia of the United States team. And that's the way the skier that will follow him will watch the move tomorrow in one of the most spectacular events in Olympic competition. 46 of the world's best skiers as another of our afternoon jumpers here live at Squaw Valley, California is poised to come down this 80-meter jump. You know, this is the event that traditionally draws the largest spectator crowds. And you'll see all the action on CBS television, and you'll see it in this way. Watch. Okay. 
On the outrun, that was Ragnar Uhland here at Squaw Valley, California. Testing today, the day before the big event, as the Olympic competitors go for the gold, silver, and bronze medals. And with me is the man that will help you tomorrow enjoy a two-hour telecast of the most spectacular event here at the Games, is one of America's greatest jumpers of all time, member of many Olympic teams and world championship teams. This is the man from Lake Placid, New York, Art Devlin. Thank you very much, and that's where I'm from, that's for sure. Well, Art, uh, <laughs> a week ago tomorrow, uh, you were covering the 60-meter jumps here at uh, uh, Squaw Valley, California, and tomorrow we have the pleasure of doing the 80. Could you... Uh, Tell us a little bit the difference between the two. The main difference, Chris, is that in a 60-meter hill, you are only capable of jumping around 215 feet safely. In an 80-meter hill, such as this one here, they will undoubtedly jump approximately 280 feet, and maybe a little bit longer tomorrow, and they'll do it in safety. You mean there are men capable here of uh, really shooting out? Chris, there are some fellows here are capable of jumping right out on top of you and me. Well, we've been watching them in practice, and their bird-like flights have certainly impressed us. What about scoring? How is it done in the 80-meter jumps? Briefly, in the scoring, uh, each jumper leaves the top of the hill with 20 points from each of the three judges, and as he comes along, he will lose points for the mistakes he makes. His distance will be comp computed actually on a slide rule, and it's nothing he has to worry about, but he will have to make it a point to do his jumping in the best style possible in order to attain good distance points and good style points. And then the total of the two will be tallied together, and the man with the highest number of points will win the tournament. How many judges are used in Olympic competition? Chris, they'll be using five judges, and the high judge and the low judge will be thrown out. In other words, if you happen to like me, you'll probably give me a 20. <laughs> so you'd lose out, and if John Carlo didn't like me, he'd give me a low one, they'd throw his out. <laughs> well, I see, uh, Art. You know, we've been talking about the difference between 60 and 80 meter jumping and about scoring. In a few moments, we'll be having more action as the men uh, hit the end run and on the takeoff here at Squaw Valley, California. Uh, Chris Shankle and Art Devlin here at Squaw Valley, California at the end of the outrun of the 80-meter jump. Previewing for you what will you will see tomorrow for about two hours between the periods of the United States-Russia hockey game. Art uh, styles in 80-meter jumping have changed over the years, and I thought that uh, our folks at home might like to see how the styles have changed. Well, the old style, Chris, was the jackknife technique, and this next boy coming down is Jackie Bietler from Ishpeming, Michigan, and he still uh, has a tendency toward the old jackknife. There is uh, Jackie, and take over, Art. Jack Bietler, David Bietler, David Bietler, David Bietler, now starting the portion of the day to the and spring. You notice the jackknife position, Chris? Yes, from the uh, waist. It is certainly different than uh, that which we have watched for the past uh, 12 days here at Squaw Valley. The one that uh, the people are really going to enjoy, I think, is the Japanese boys. They have a tendency to get on top of their skis and really lay parallel to the skis. But the reasoning for it, or the reason for it, is they have a hinge in their boot which enables the skis to float right up in their face, but actually costs them a little bit of distance because they're pushing air instead of riding air. But it's very spectacular to watch, and tomorrow I think you'll really get a good look at it. Well, that was the old style that Jackie just demonstrated. Now, uh, what about Steve? Steve Reichel is a very good American jumper, and he is a little bit too straight in his jumping. By that I mean, you'll notice he doesn't bend at the waist at all. Let's watch him. Now. Take a notice as Steve comes into the air, and you'll see he's very straight. See how straight his body is? But he's a beautiful jumper, and that was a long jump. Well, the crowd here, you know, with numbers approximately 20,000, this is phenomenal here at Squaw Valley, California, because uh, the biggest hockey game is going on only uh, adjacent to the area from where we're watching all this. Yet there are 20,000 out here watching this uh, CBS demonstration on the 80-meter hill. Here's an old friend of ours, we can tell, because he uh, does not have the jumper's hat on, Art. <laughs> this is old man Tickle. That's my buddy from New Jersey, Art Tokel. He's probably the oldest fellow around, and uh, it's just a crime he isn't on the team, Chris, because it's just a technical error that he isn't. What will he demonstrate? I think he's going to demonstrate Clark Gable, but actually he's going to look like a Finn. <laughs> he's demonstrating the finish technique. Notice the hands back and the beautiful lean of his body. Good long jump. For 80 meters. There's one of the real veterans who is uh, greatly respected here at Squaw Valley. Hey, Art, come here. 
Art Tokel, ladies and gentlemen, right here. How's that hill today, Art? Fine today. Uh, Jeez. Wow, you got out there, what about well, it? Well, I don't think I get my breath here now. Oh, that's all right. It's beautiful jumping today. Sunshine, and uh, today is really the day to jump. I hope it'll be like this tomorrow. Well, we hope so, too, Art, and uh, thank you for giving us that wonderful demonstration, and uh, you've been a credit to this country as a jumper. Thank you. Thank you. Art Toka, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, you can see that uh, this does take a man to uh, participate in Olympic competition, Art, because... Uh, uh, not that you need brute strength, but it takes more courage than uh, you can imagine that one person would have. Well, actually, Chris, the fellows that will jump the longest here, if you were to get a look at them in a pair of shorts, you'll notice they don't have very husky legs at all, but they have long tendons, and uh, it has a tendency to help them, these long tendons in the back of the calf, the calf of the leg so that they can lean much further forward than the fellow with the shorter calf which stops him from leaning out over his skis. Art, you have jumped all over the world and we are at the top of the 80 meter jump now as all of us are watching it. Uh, how high up is this particular location? The vertical drop in the 80 meter hill here, Chris, is approximately 450 feet. The overall run is a little over a quarter of a mile. So in this quarter mile run, they will drop a total of 450 feet. Well, of course, now this is the way it looks from the um, other end, the top to the bottom. And we have a starter ready up there in the uh, slot, and uh, there's another boy that we've That's Rudy joined. Mackey, Chris. He is a very good American jumper and a very nice fellow. And uh, he typifies the uh, finish technique as well as Toko. That flag signify that everything's ready? There comes Rudy. He has a very nice in-run position, if you'll notice. Notice his arms are back way over the skis. Very nice jump. Jumped 82 meters, Chris. That's a long one in this hill. And of course, um, probably the folks at home, we should point out that on tomorrow, when we'll be bringing this their way in Olympic competition for two hours, that in addition to distance, form is a factor. The form is probably a little bit more important than the distance, Chris, because the distance is automatic, but the form points, if a judge gives you a point and a half more than another one, uh, that point and a half is an awful lot of distance to make up. Art, our next American jumper is ready, and this is Jim this Brennan. Is Jim, Jimmy Brennan, Chris, he is the present national champion. He won it three weeks ago in Iron Mountain, Michigan. He's a very sharp junker and, uh, jumper and very young, but in two or three years, I think you're going to see a lot of him. You notice he's using the finish technique? It seems as though those uh, ski tips uh, would touch the nose of the uh, or this jumper. Sometimes they do. In the case of the Japanese boys out here watching them, he's getting hit in the nose every day with his ski tips. <laughs> We've watched all 46 practice representing 14 countries, Art. And uh, we've never been so amazed with uh, their ability. And the closeness of competition tomorrow should be something. Some of the big names uh, uh, we'll give in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at John Elliott. This is another young American boy that I think you're going to see a lot of in the next two years. How fast is he going in this end run? Approximately 58 to 60 miles an hour, Chris. You notice how he brought his hands out in the landing. Now the Finnish boys will keep their hands back all the way to get every inch there is in that flight. You know, all of us watching, when we see the boys jump, uh, think of the uh, great distance and height that, gee, to, uh, to uh, fall would be something. If you fall, are points deducted? If you fall, Chris, you absolutely lose out. You haven't got a chance of doing anything. But if you'll notice these boys, when they do fall, they relax just like a cat. They just let themselves kind of limp, and nothing happens to them, actually, in a well-prepared hill. Okay, Art, uh, we'll take a pause here at uh, the 80-meter jump at Squaw Valley, California, where all the action will start tomorrow. And right now, we'll continue with more exclusive coverage of the 8th Winter Olympic Games from Squaw Valley, California. Back here at Blythe Arena once again, the score is USSR 2, the United States 1, and Chris and Art Devlin, we certainly enjoyed that demonstration of what we're going to see tomorrow on that 80 meter jump. Right now, a great hockey game, second period coming up. The scoring, Bill Cleary for the United States, Ben Alexandrov and Mike Butchkov for the Soviet Union. A line waiting out there for the United States. The center is Paul Johnson. On the left wing is Dick Rodenheiser from Malden, Massachusetts. And on the right wing is 
Weldon Olson of Marquette, Michigan. And the gentleman in the center there, imbibing in a hot beverage of some type, as it is rather cool here in Blythe Arena, is Governor Pat Brown of California. Down on one knee is Sologubov, the very popular captain of the Soviet team. These players have played against each other quite a while, and you can see that Paul Johnson is talking to him. Nick Sologubov is a real veteran. He's the oldest player on the team, the most experienced. He's a war veteran, was an officer in the Soviet Army. This is his fourth year as captain of the Soviet national team. And he plays great hockey despite several serious wounds incurred in World War II. Now talking to Johnny Mayasic. <laughs> you see, they get along pretty well, these two. Johnny Mayasic, a great hockey player from Great Bay, Wisconsin. He only joined the team two days before the Olympics started here. Immediately at the end of this period of the hockey game, the victory ceremonies will be held during the intermission between the second and third period. We'll cover that live for you. Walter Cronkite will cover the victory ceremonies between the second and third period. But let's get back to hockey. Soviet Union in the white uniform, they lead 2-1. On the attack is Locktap, a very fine hockey player. This is the strongest line for the Soviet Union out there right now. As Salagubov to Alexandrov, who scored the first goal for the Soviet Union. Olsen behind the cage, picked up by Alexandrov, the center to Salagubov, poked aside by Johnson. Alexandrov, a backhander is wide, goes across to number nine, Almetov, into the corner, Locktap and Mayasic scrap for it. Lockdown center to Sologubov, goes right by a stick. Rodenheiser on the puck. Puchkov out of the net to make the clear. Sologubov again to Alexandrov. Lockdown comes in, shoots, blocked and pumped by Mayasic. Picked up by Johnson. Ridden off by Alexandrov. And it's not icing because it hit a Soviet stick. Lockdown again sneaks it through. Beautiful save by John McCartan, who's been tremendous in the nets here during this tournament. Almatov digs it out, number nine. Broken up by the United States. Goes back to Salagubov. Johnny Mayasic, number four. Paul Johnson, 15. Has to cross to Roden. Hides it pick up by Johnson. Shot partially blocked. Bolin puts it aside, number four. Mayasic a shot, blocked by Salagubov, off Bolin. Skitters the length of the ice. And this is icing. So there's a whistle on the ice. The score is USSR 2, USA 1. We're waiting for a face-off. The line out there now is number 6, Bill Christian. Number 10, Roger Christian. And number 12, Tom Williams for the USA. That's Bill Christian. The face-off against Sidorenkov, defenseman for the Soviet Union. He, Sidorenkov has it, checked by Bill Christian. Tom Williams almost had a crack at a shot by Owen is wide. Owen slaps it aside. Here's Grebenyakov to Sitsinov. Pavola, number nine on it, runs right into Sitsinov. Butchkov tries to dig it out. He's pinned in by Williams. And we have a whistle for a face-off. Two minutes and 15 seconds have now gone by here in the second period. Russia's leading 2-1, all the scoring in the first period. On the face-off, it's Sitsinov, number 12, against Christian. At Sitsinov, 12, checked by Pavola. Butchkov comes in, number 10. Checked again by Pavola. Butchkov carries behind. Out in front of Sitsinov, he shoots. Grebenyakov, number 11. Shot kicked out by McCartan. Center again, picked up by Owen. Owen flips it over to Williams. Williams to Christian, broken up by Kuchewski. Grubrenikov stopped by the American defense. Here's two brothers, Roger Christian after it. Rather, Bill Christian, Roger Christian with him. Coming back is Sitsinov. 
Williams, number 12. After is Pavola. And into the crowd it goes. 2-1 the count here. About three and a half minutes have gone by, as you can see on the clock, 20 minute period, 1648. I might also add in this competition, there's no overtime. The teams play a tie. They end up with the same number of points. It's the team that scored the most goals, subtract how many are scored against, who has the biggest total, who wins. McVeigh and the two Cleary boys out there for the United States. The line for USSR, the big guy there is Pachukov, number 16, with Groshev and Yakushev. 14 for the United States. All right, there was Bob Cleary. Here's Pachutkov. Mayasic, number four, breaks it up. Pass up to Bill Cleary, who's stopped by Bolin. Captain Crane off the boards, intended for Bob Cleary. Here's Patuchkov coming in. The center, flipped aside by Crane, goes to Bill Cleary, number seven. Bill Cleary. Tries to go right over Sola Grubov. McVeigh has it off the board. Bolin number four, Bob Cleary, 14. Karain breaks it up. His center just put the side by Sola Gubov. Riding in hard is Yakushev, number 14. Patutkov hopped over his stick. McVeigh has it. Now it's Mayasic. Patutkov coming in on him. He drops it for Bill Cleary. Long drive by Cleary. Love by Putskov, the goalie. Groshev, 15, slapped aside by Kirena with a hard check on Kuchutkov as Kirena goes down. And there's a whistle on the ice. The score is USSR 2, USA 1. Change in lineups for both clubs. Paul Johnson comes out with Dick Rodenheiser and Weldon Olsen for the United States. Shot by Alexandrov is wide. Lakhtev has it in the corner. Alexandrov tries to center it. Almatov, number nine, checked by Pavola. Pavola goes down. Sidorenkov to Alexandrov, high in the air. Pavola and Lakhtev fight for it. And it's clear in the neutral zone. Lakhtev again. A pass to Almatov, number nine. Pavola, number nine, comes in on him for the United States. Rides him off the puck. They turn it against the boards, and we have a face-off. Four minutes and about 45 seconds have gone by here in the second period. The United States trailing by a score of 2-1. On the face-off, USA on the attack. Rodenheiser. Almost tipped in. Nice play by the goalie, Nikolai Putskov. Well, then Olsen almost tipped that one in. Beautiful pass from Dick Rodenheiser. That's Nikolai Putskov, whom we're looking at, a very acrobatic goalie. For the American team, number five is Bob Owen from Minnesota, student at Harvard. He's playing with Pavola, big boy from Hancock, Michigan, number nine. In the faceoff, it was Olsen. Logubov going back for it. It's Olsen, number 16, tries to center it. Has it in the corner again, the center, nobody there. Owen keeps it in. Grabenikov, number 11, has it. Stopped by Olsen. Tries to center it, Olsen goes down, comes in on Grabenikov. And we have the whistle for the face-off again. The scoring... Bill Cleary for the United States scored first, and Ben Alexandrov and Mike Butchkov for Russia, all scoring in the first period. 
That's Bill Christian, number six, on the faceoff. In the corner once more. Solagubov has it. Went down. The goalie is way out of the cage for a second. He was dropped by Bill Christian. It's Butchkoff, number 10, the center. Kicked out by goalie McCartan. Bill Christian, his brother Roger right along with him. Bolin, number four, for Russia. Grabenyakov tries to get it out. He does to Sitsinov. And in the neutral zone with it is Bill Christian. To brother Roger, number 10, carries around Bolin. Comes in, shoots, just wide. United States putting the pressure on. They trail by a score of 2-1. The play's got a little rough. Solagubov and Olsen went down. Picked off by Buchkov. Stopped by Mayasic. Slapped aside by Roger Christian. And there's a whistle on the ice. The score is Russia 2, United States 1. Very fast hockey game here. Change in lineups for both clubs. It's been rough, rugged, and clean. The line for the United States, that's Bob Cleary facing off against Matukov. McVeigh has it behind the cage. The defense is Owen and Pavola for the United States. Bill Cleary, Bob Cleary, and Tom McVeigh the line. Here comes Kuchevsky, number six. The pass to Yakushev. An offside on the right wing was Patukov for the Soviet Union. In between the second and third period, Walter Cronkite will bring you live the victory ceremonies, which are most impressive. 2-1 the score here. Seven and a half minutes have gone by in the second period. The United States trailing. Bob Cleary, number 14, with the backhander around the boards. Kuchevsky on it. Up to Groshev. Pavola comes in on his shoot. And a fine save. John McCartan's been playing beautifully in the cage. Bill Cleary poked aside nice, a good poke check by Sidorenkov. Shot in by Bob Owen. Kuchewski has it behind his own cage. To Groshev, makes a neat stop. Patukov, a little backhander. And John McCartan, with Patukov coming in on him, decides to hang on to the puck. United States leads here in the championship round of the competition. They've won three games for a total of six points. The Soviet Union has won two and tied one. That one with Sweden. They have five points. Right now, the United States is trailing Russia 2-1. Eleven and a half minutes remaining in the second period. Solagubov, that is, passes it in. Trickles off the pads of Alexandrov. Hard body check shown on lock death by Johnny Mayasich. Here's Paul Johnson. Taken away by Bolin. Bolin back for Russia. The United States is checking harder now, trying to slow down these flying Russians. Alamut off the shot. Alexandrov in front. A backhander off the post, I believe. Shot by Bolin, stopped in front. And it's cleared over the blue line. Down goes Solikubov. Johnson comes in. He shoots off the side of the cage. He has his own rebound in the corner. It's centered. Blocked by Almatov. Picked up by Alexandrov. He has Lotkev with him. They have Mayasich to beat. Here's Lotkev coming in. Shoots wide. Centered again by Alexandrov. It's in front. Stopped by Solikubov. Into the corner it goes. 
Real scrap for it there. Out in front again. The shot by Almatov is wide. Rebounder Alexandrov, the center. Stopped by Rodenheiser. Olsen has it to Rodenheiser.